Yo, what's up guys? It's Noah here. Uh, and in today's video, I'm going to be talking about the NBA slate on DraftKings for Tuesday, uh, November the 1st. We do have a shorter slate for Tuesday, just four games tonight, but we're still going to go game by game, guys. We're going to talk through each one of these four games, kind of give my quick thoughts on the slate, what does stand out to me taking a first look um, on Monday night. But before we do get started with the video and the breakdown, as always, if you guys enjoy these DFS videos and if they do help you out, hit that like button down below. Always do appreciate the likes. If you have not yet, hit that subscribe button as well. And check out the sponsor of the video, Prize Picks. So Prize Picks, they are a player prop based DFS site. Very simple, very easy to use. You're just taking more or less on a player's projection. Um, they don't have many projections posted right now for Tuesday's NBA slate. But obviously, as we get closer to the start of the games, you know there will be a ton of projections available. I'm making this video on Monday night, so there's really nothing up right now. Um, but you know, you can take a look at their full NBA board, see if there's any props that you like. Again, you're just taking more or less on a projection. They have NBA. Price Picks does offer a ton of other sports as well. Uh, you can mix and match sports on Price Picks. You can make multi-sport entries. It's a lot of fun. You guys definitely need to be playing over there. If you're not signed up for Price Picks yet, get signed up. Use code NOAH. You will get your first deposit matched up to $100 when you do sign up with my promo code. Um, and I did not make a prize picks video for Monday, but I definitely will have a video up for Tuesday slate. If I don't get it posted tonight, it'll definitely go up sometime early early on Tuesday, um, kind of Tuesday morning. So if you want to know some plays I like for prize picks today, check out that video. I do also provide more prize picks plays over on Patreon. You guys can check out all the additional content I do provide over on Patreon. I give player pools and core plays for both DraftKings and for Yahoo for NBA DFS, uh, for NFL DFS as well. Also, again, prize picks plays, additional prize picks plays that I'm on, those are provided on Patreon. If you're interested in that, it's linked down below in the description. But talking through uh, you know, Tuesday's four-game slate, we'll start off with the first game of the night, the Warriors and the Heat. So we did just see these teams play pretty recently. Um, Steph Curry you know, had a pretty good game against Miami. Um, he's 9,600 for today, went off for 59 DK points, played 37 minutes. I think the good thing about Curry here is that we know he's going to be locked into big minutes because this should be a you know, pretty close competitive game. Miami actually, you know, historically has been a pretty bad team at defending the three-point line. They actually give up a lot of three-point attempts, and we saw, we saw Curry shoot seven for 14 from three uh, when they did face Miami. So, like, I don't think the matchup's that bad for Curry. Um, you know, obviously, he had a really good game against the Heat, so, like, he's definitely in play on this slate. I think there's other guys I'd rather pay up for. You know, we have KD and Kyrie playing today. Um, you got SGA you could pay up for. You have the Phoenix guards, Booker, and CP3. I don't think Curry is going to be the guy that I build around tonight, but you know, no issues going there in tournaments. We know Curry always offers a big ceiling. Now, Jimmy Butler has not been that great this season for fantasy, but he did have his best game of the season against this Warriors team. 37 minutes and 59 drafting points, 27 points, 6 rebounds, 8 assists, and 6 steals for Jimmy Butler in that game. You know, Jimmy Butler is a guy that can contribute in all categories, score, rebound, he can get assists, he can get defensive stats too. 8,400, like he definitely has upside to pay off this price tag. I still don't think that Jimmy Butler is going to be someone that I build around today, but you know I have no issue going there on a short slate like this. Like he is definitely playable. Bam Adebayo though is a guy that I do like quite a bit. He's the thumbnail for today. Seventy four hundred, I think, is just too cheap for Bam Adebayo. We've seen his minutes be really high the last few games. Thirty eight minutes in back to back games. I think a lot of that has been due to Dwayne Demon being out. Um, Dwayne Demon is expected to play today, so maybe Bam Adebayo doesn't play thirty eight minutes. Maybe he plays like thirty four. But even 34 minutes from Bam at 7,400, he can easily put up 40-plus DraftKings points. Um, he did have a lot of success against Golden State, 49 DK points in 30, 38 minutes. The Warriors this season have actually been pretty bad defending the center position. They've been giving up a lot of fantasy points to centers this year. So I think it's a really good spot for Bam. Um, I think at 7,400, he's still too cheap in my opinion. The Warriors have been playing at a really fast pace. I think they're actually leading the league in pace this season. Um, so, you know, it's a big time pace up spot for Miami. I think Bam at 7,400 looks like a really good play. Tyler Hero, I don't mind at 7,200. He did really struggle against the Warriors, but we know Hero is going to play big minutes. He's going to have really good usage. I think he's actually leading the Heat in usage this season. He's been taking a lot of shots. He's been rebounding really well, um, too. At 7,200, like, I think Hero is more of a GPP play, but he's definitely viable if you do want to go there. You know, Andrew Wiggins, we know what we're getting from Andrew Wiggins 35, 36 minutes. He's been a little bit inconsistent lately. The production's definitely been down a little bit. But we know the minutes are going to be massive. We know Wiggins can you know, provide some upside. He feels like a pretty safe play at 6,900. He doesn't, you know, for, for ceiling in tournaments, he's not a guy that I really ever feel like I have to play in tournaments when he's priced around the 7K range. But definitely, you know, if you're just looking for a guy that's probably going to give you 35 DK points, like Wiggins is probably that guy. Um, 
But I think there's some other guys I'd probably rather go to in GBPs. Like, I think Tyler Hero has a bigger ceiling than Wiggins if I'm just, like, choosing between one of those two guys. Then you have Jordan Poole. He had a pretty good game last game. He did start in place of Klay Thompson. Obviously, Klay Thompson's playing today. With the price tag up to 6,600, I'm probably not going to go to Jordan Poole here. Um, he's just going to be a guy that I kind of avoid today. And then you got Kyle Lowry at 6,100. Lowry, you know, was pretty solid in this matchup against Golden State. He's been really, really up and down this season, but he's been stringing together some good games lately. 33, 36, and 34 DK points. I would expect Lowry to play, you know, mid to high 30s minutes here if the game's close, which obviously it should be. So, like, I don't think Lowry's that bad of a play. I don't think, I haven't played Kyle Lowry yet this season. On a short four-game slate like this, I think Lowry is definitely viable. And then even Draymond Green, you know, Draymond's been getting about 30 minutes a night, um, and I think he should continue to play around 30 minutes a night. 5,700, he still has the upside to put up a good game um, at this salary in just 30 minutes. So, like, I don't think Draymond's a bad play. He's not someone I'm prioritizing today, but he's viable. Clay Thompson, 5,500, like, he's okay, but they're, you know, they're going to keep Clay around, like, the low 30s in minutes at the most. He did play 32 minutes against Charlotte, but that game also did go to overtime. So, like, I think Clay probably plays, like, 28 to 30 minutes here. Again, he got up 14 threes against Miami, as we talked about. Miami gives up a lot of three-point attempts, so I think Clay's going to be able to get a lot of open looks from three. It's just a matter of if he makes them or not. He's more of a tournament play, but he's, like, he's viable. And that's really it. Like, I'm not seeing too much else I like here. None of these value plays are that appealing. Um, you know, Kevon Looney's going to start, but he probably plays like low 20s minutes. He did get up to 29 minutes against Miami. Maybe they want him out there to guard Bam. Maybe he sees, you know, upper 20s in minutes today. But again, at 4,100, like, I think Looney's just kind of an okay value. I mean, there's really not much value on this slate to begin with. So, like, if you want to go to Mooney, uh, to Moody, I don't, or Looney, excuse me, to Looney, I don't hate it. Um, but yeah, that's really it for this one. Let's go ahead and move on to the next game, uh, Chicago and Brooklyn. So we got some injuries to watch in this one. Zach Levine is listed as questionable for today. Ben Simmons did not play on Monday. They said he's hopeful to play today. So we'll have to keep an eye on Ben Simmons status. I think Io is questionable as well. Yeah, he's questionable. Seth Curry did not play on Monday. We'll have to see if he's able to play for this game. Um, so maybe this could be a game we get some value from depending on, you know, if the, some of these guys get ruled out. Looking at the top though with Kevin Durant and Kyrie Irving, you know, once... Once Ben Simmons got ruled out Monday night, I did have more interest in KD and Kyrie, and they both actually had really good games. KD went for 61 DK points, um, played 39 minutes. Kyrie went for 55 DK points. He played 43 minutes. Even on a back-to-back, -back, like I would think these guys are going to play big minutes. I mean, the, the Nets right now, like they need to win games. That they've obviously started off the season very poorly. I would expect both KD and Kyrie to have pretty big usage here, um, especially if Ben Simmons is out. Like I think if Ben Simmons is out again, that does improve the outlook for both Durant and Irving. Normally, Durant and Irving are not guys that I really go out of my way to play when they're you know when they're priced correctly. But on a short slate like this, they do look like two of the best payup options. Um, so I actually do like these Brooklyn guys quite a bit today. Between the two, I think slightly to Kevin Durant, but it's really close. I think they both project pretty similarly. Um, but yeah, if, if Ben Simmons sits again, I think you know Katie and Kyrie are both really appealing. You know, DeMar DeRozan, Nikola Vucevic, for me, I think in order... For me to really go to these guys, you know, in my main lineup, I would probably need, I would want Levine to be out. I don't think I'm going to consider DeRozan or Vooch as like top options if Levine is in. Obviously, DeRozan and Vooch can still have good games even if Levine plays, but they just, it wouldn't be as likely. Um, DeRozan, though, has had a really big usage rate this season. He's, you know, played big minutes. He seems to, you know, his production's definitely been down, but he has, he has had some big games without Levine. I know their season opener against Miami, Levine was out that game and he put up 64 DK points. But, like, I'm not really in love with these Chicago guys today, especially if Levine plays. I think it is a pretty good matchup for Vooch, and I want to say that he's historically done pretty well against Brooklyn. He's coming off a big game against the Sixers. Like, maybe you could go to Vooch today, but, again, he's not, like, a priority. Um, even if Levine plays, I don't have much interest in him. Nicholas Claxton actually had a really good game Monday night. You know, maybe he benefits without Ben Simmons just because that's one less guy that can take minutes away from him. He actually played 31 minutes, which was the most that he's played you know, in their last four games. If you told me we're going to get 31 minutes again from Nicholas Claxton, I actually have a good amount of interest in him, but his minutes have kind of been up and down this season. Um, but he's a good scorer. He's a guy that can rebound. He can block shots. Like, he's still viable on a short slate like this. And like, I'm not loving too much else in this game. I mean, Io, like, if Io sits and if Levine sits, I think that actually makes Caruso a pretty good value just because Caruso would have to play a lot of minutes if Io and Levine are out. I'm pretty sure Io and Levine were both out last game. Caruso started and played 35 minutes. So... I actually think, you know, in terms of value, we can go to Caruso here if Io and Levine are out. Even if one of the two are out, I think Caruso will be in play. 
I'm guessing they're going to want Caruso out there to guard Kyrie. So the minutes should be pretty solid for him at 4,300. He's definitely going to be in play for value today. Um, Royce O'Neal probably you know gets like mid 30s minutes. I mean, Royce O'Neal is always going to get big minutes. He's just not the best point per minute player. But again, if Ben Simmons is out, I mean, that would pretty much guarantee Royce O'Neal to play 36, 38 minutes. You got to hope he knocks down a couple threes, get some rebounds, maybe get some defensive stats. He's basically, he's like a better version of P.J. Tucker, pretty much. I, I always say that. Um, but yeah, 4,800 Royce O'Neal on a four-game slate. Like, I don't hate that for value. That's probably it. I, I know Joe Harris started on Monday night. I don't think he really did anything, though. Yeah, he played 29 minutes, just had 18 DK points. On a back-to-back, we might actually see Joe Harris sit today, so... That is worth noting. Brooklyn is on a back-to-back. I'm guessing, you know, Kyrie, KD are all going to play, but keep an eye on the injury report for Brooklyn today. You know, it's always, anytime teams are on back-to-backs, there's always a chance that somebody winds up sitting. But that's it for this game. Let's move on to the next one, Orlando and OKC. So OKC, you got SGA at the top, 9,400. You know, I think SGA is firmly in play today. We've just seen SGA dominate lately, you know, 60-plus DK points in two out of their last three games. I think the matchup against Orlando is solid. You know, I'm, there's no one on the defensive end from Orlando that I'm too worried about stopping SGA here. And obviously, with Josh Giddy still out, that's going to mean, you know, a really big role for SGA. This also should be a game the Thunder are able to keep close. And, you know, we should see SGA play his normal 35, 36 minutes tonight. So he's definitely one of the better pay-up options along with, you know, the Brooklyn guys. I do like SGA quite a bit today. I think Paulo Benchero is fine at 7,900. Um, you know, in this matchup against OKC, I think he definitely can have some success. OKC's never been like a great defensive team. Um, Benchero priced at 7,900 does feel about right, but he should play big minutes here if it's a close game. Um, I think he might have been in some foul trouble last game, and that you know that game against Charlotte was a blowout. Um, but I think we're going to get like 35, 36 minutes from Benchero if you know, the game's close, no foul trouble. He's in. He's in play. Um, not a priority on this slate though. Wendell Carter Jr., really good matchup. OKC's historically struggled against big men, but I think at almost 7K, Wendell Carter is priced where he should be. Um, he's just kind of like a GPP play. I mean, you, at this salary, you need Wendell Carter to put up over 40 DraftKings points, and he's only done that once this season. So, you know, I wish he was a little bit cheaper, but the matchup is really good, so I think Wendell Carter's still viable. Franz Wagner at 6,500. Um, Tougher spot, especially if he's going to be guarded by Lou Dort, but I think Wagner's fine at 6,500. His production's been down a little bit, but without Cole Anthony, potentially without Jalen Suggs as well, you know, Franz Wagner should handle the ball a lot. His assist numbers should be up, um, you know, without those guys. He's still uh, viable in play, but I, I'm not, you know, really running to roster Franz Wagner today. Jalen Suggs is questionable, could maybe be back for this game. If Suggs does wind up playing, that will make these Orlando guys look a tad bit less appealing. I uh, do want to mention that Bull Bull has actually been starting lately in place of Cole Anthony and in place of Suggs. If Suggs plays today, I don't know if he would move back into the starting lineup in place of Bull Bull or if they would just continue to start Bull Bull and then bring Suggs off the bench. But he's been playing really well, Bull Bull. He's been playing good minutes too, 27 minutes, even in a blowout against Charlotte. He played 30 minutes last game against Dallas. He's been a fantasy point per minute player this season. He's a guy that can score and rebound. He can block shots. His price tag is up to 5700 now, but I still think he's in play if he does wind up starting. If he starts, I'm guessing he plays about 30 minutes, and we saw, I mean, he can put up 36 DK points in 30 minutes. He can get you a double-double. He can block shots. So, yeah, I'm definitely interested in a bowl bowl if he's still starting. Lou Dort at 5600 not really going to go there. I think he's priced correctly. Trey Mann, I know has had some big games recently, but, you know, with, with him playing alongside SGA, I think his upside is just not as high. I'll probably, you know, fade trade man here. Uh, RJ Hampton's been playing well off the bench, but at 5,200, he's priced correctly. Terrence Ross has been starting lately, but at 4,700, he feels priced correctly, if not a little bit overpriced. I don't think there's really anything else I'm going to go to in this game. Um, I know that I did see the Thunder started Poku at center last game. Um, he, he didn't. He wasn't really productive, but Poku has historically been a relatively productive player when he does get minutes. If they start him at center again, like I think he's actually okay for value. Um, only playing 24 minutes last game was a little bit of a concern. I'm not sure if he was in foul trouble or if he just only played 24 minutes. But if he does start, especially with the minimal value that we have right now, I will have some interest in Poku if he winds up starting. But this Thunder team, I mean, they're going to run a really deep rotation. They're going to play a lot of guys. The only players you even feel comfortable projecting for over 30 minutes are SGA, Dort, and maybe Trey Mann. Like, no one else is a guarantee to play 30 minutes. Um, so, yeah, I think we can go ahead and talk about the next game. Minnesota and Phoenix, last game of the night, late night hammer. So starting off with, at the top here with Devin Booker. Devin Booker coming in at 9K today. 
you know, Booker, when he's priced at 9K, like he's never a guy that I feel like I have to pay up for. But obviously on a shorter slate like this, Booker is viable. I think I'd rather play Kevin Durant, Kyrie Irving, SGA. But obviously Booker's, he's in play for me. He's more of a GBP option, but he's definitely viable. Carl Anthony Towns, you know, his production has been so up and down this season. He's had some big games recently. He also had some stinkers to start the season. Seems like he's been getting back into form as of late. You know, 42 DK points now in four straight games. He's coming off a 52 DK point game against the Spurs. It's good to see Cat playing well. Um, does this continue? I don't really know. I think his production isn't going to be as good playing with Rudy Gobert this season, but Cat is definitely in play on a short slate like this. Rudy Gobert, his production's actually kind of been down lately. Um, you know, we've seen him, him have some pretty bad games. He did have a really big game against the Lakers, but against the Spurs, he struggled. <laughs> you look at the, his game log, he's faced the Spurs three times. 26, 25, and 29 DK points. For, for whatever reason, Rudy Gobert has just done terrible against the Spurs this season. Obviously, not having to play the Spurs today is going to be beneficial. At 8,200, like, I think Gobert is in play, but like, I'm not in love with him at that salary. Anthony Edwards, I think, is fine. He, he was in foul trouble last game. He also shot the ball terribly. He started to pick it up in the, in the second half and in the third quarter. Um, I think he's priced about right. I, I'll be interested to see who, I'm guessing Mikel Bridges will guard Anthony Edwards here. Mikel Bridges has historically been a really, really good defender. He's a guy that I try and avoid, you know, but we've, we've seen Anthony Edwards have really good games, even in tough matchups, but obviously this is a pretty tough spot, if he, especially if he's going to be guarded by, by Mikel Bridges. Um, Chris Paul at 7,700, I think is a solid play in the mid-range. You know, Chris Paul's production's not been as great this season, but he's still playing mid to high 30s minutes in close games. Against Minnesota, I would expect this game to be close. Minnesota's been playing at you know, the fourth fastest pace in the league this season, so this should be a relatively fast-paced game. You know, it's definitely a pace-up spot here for the Suns. Um, so I think Chris Paul's fine. Not a priority today, but he, he's playable. D'Angelo Russell at 7K feels priced about right. You know, he's not really someone I'm going out of my way to play, but you know, as like a last piece in, I'm fine putting him in if he fits. And then like Mikael Bridges at 6,200. I know Bridges is coming off a big game, but he's priced correctly. If anything, he's a little bit overpriced. You know, Bridges, not normally a guy that has much of a ceiling. Um, in order for him to have a big game, he's just going to have to make a lot of shots or you know get a lot of defensive stats, which, which he can always do. But I'm not in love with Bridges at this price tag. And then the centers for Phoenix. So they're going to be without DeAndre Ayton for, I believe, a couple weeks is what I saw. We actually did see Bismack Biombo start at center last game. Jock Landale came off the bench. They pretty much split the center minutes dead even. Uh, he, or against Houston, Bismack played 22 minutes. He did start. Jock Landell played 23 minutes. I'm guessing they played Cam Johnson a little bit at center. I don't really know. Um, but I think for the most part, we're going to get a pretty even split in center minutes with Biombo and Landale. We saw whenever Aiton missed games last season, it was pretty much a dead even split in the center minutes between Biombo and JaVale McGee. Since Biombo is the starter, I think he does have the upper hand. Um, he was in some foul trouble last game, I do believe. He might have picked up some fouls quickly. I can't remember, honestly. Uh, but he played 22 minutes. He had 20 DK points. You know, Biombo has historically been a pretty productive, permanent player. He's a guy that can score and rebound. He's a good shot blocker. But he's 5,500 now, so like he's not someone that I'm really trying to prioritize today. Um, he's still playable because I think he, st he can still put up a good game for the salary. But the $5,500 salary doesn't make him a standout option. And then Jock Landale probably gets like mid-20s minutes off the bench. He's not really someone I'm going to consider today, especially with him priced at 5 k now. Honestly, you know, on DraftKings at least, the Phoenix guys don't look that great. The bigs at least, just because I think they are priced where they should be. Cam Johnson, I think, you know, minutes are more secure without Aiton. He did play 31 minutes last game, had 33 DK points. I think his rebounding numbers will probably see a little bit of a spike while Aiton is out. I'm fine with Cam Johnson as like a you know cheaper value. Um, I don't think he's like a great play at 5,400, but he's at least playable on a short slate like this. And that's really it. Like I don't see any value that I like in this game. I know Jalen Noel's been playing really well off the bench, but 5K, like he feels priced right. He's basically priced at his ceiling. I know Jaden McDaniels has been starting lately, um, or he's been starting all season. He's you know had some good games, also had some pretty disappointing games. The minutes should be there, I guess. So like. <laughs> At 4,700, with how few value plays we have right now, like I think Jaden McDaniels is an okay value, but again, I'm not running to roster Jaden McDaniels. I mean, that's really it. There's really, really not much value in this game. So I think that does it, guys. That does it for Tuesday's little four-game slate. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. As always, guys, appreciate you watching. Hit that like button. If you have not yet, hit that subscribe button as well. Check out uh, Prospects, too. They are the sponsor of this video. Sign up for Prospects. Use promo code NOAH. You will get your first deposit matched up to $100. When you do sign up with my promo code and if you guys do want 
uh, more prospects plays from me, along with all of my other DFS content, my, my player pools, my core plays for both DraftKings and for Yahoo. I provide those over on Patreon. You can check out the Patreon link down below in the description. See all the premium content I do offer over there. But best of luck on this four-game slate, guys. Thanks, as always, for watching the video. Hope you enjoyed. We'll see you in the next one.